G'day guys, how are you? Uh, welcome to Global Connections and Australia's Special Connections. And I guess today our learning intention is this. We are learning which countries Australia has a special connection with and why. Okay. And our success criteria, our success criteria is uh, this. We are going to be able to name the countries that Australia has special connections with and why. For example, we might be able to, to identify the United States and state that we have tourism, military and cultural um, connections with that country and we might be able to go into some detail there. Okay, let's have a go. Okay, the uh, first country we are looking at today, the first country is China. And we have significant trade relationships uh, with China. In fact, our, our imports, which means um, what, we, um, what we bring in from China, import means you bring in, are worth more than Australian dollars, 21 billion. And we bring in a lot of telecommunications equipment, IT products, furniture and homewares um, from China. I'm making this recording in 2020 and you might have noticed that some of the stores are a little bit more empty than usual, particularly Kmart because we're having a bit of a squabble with China um, right now. Our exports to China include iron ore, gas and coal and that is worth about 80 billion or 79 billion dollars and that's a lot of money hey that is a great deal of money you can see actually we sell more to china than we buy from china and so when we have a squabble with china that does impact us um certainly in the financial negative okay so china is one big country that we have got special connections with Hey, number two is probably the United States, though these are not in any rank order. I apologise for that. But the United States is another country that we have got um, special connections with. We have got tourism connections with the United States and we have got thousands of um, Americans coming here and thousands of Australians going to America uh, each year. We have got military connections with the United States. Now, we have been allies in most wars um, with the United States. Um, we certainly were allies in World War II with them. Um, we certainly have been allies in Afghanistan and Iraq with them. Um, we are quite militarily tied to uh, the United States. Uh, and that might be because we are actually both colonies of Britain, which means we both um, are originally were colonised by Britain, which is the United States, sorry, the United Kingdom. And so we have got very close cultural ties with the United States. We have a similar culture, and culture means what people does and how they do it and why they do it. So we sort of watch the same television. We wear the same clothes. We have many of the same religions in our um in our countries and probably most importantly our government system is quite the same um, if you went to the united states you would find it's quite similar to australia there are some notable differences but in general compared to the rest of the uh, the world it's quite similar Hey, let's have a look at New Zealand next. Let's have a look at New Zealand. New Zealand's number three. And New Zealand are our neighbours. They are right next door to us. And uh, uh, they are also actually a British colony. So some of the um, some of the connections we have are sport. Now, of course, we play rugby <laughs> with um, New Zealand. We are quite competitive with New Zealand in that regard. So we have a strong connection there. And I should highlight, of course, that we are neighbours as well. And because we are neighbours, we are quite close and we are allies with each other we are neighbors that get on there are some neighbors that don't get on but New Zealand uh, we are neighbors that certainly get on again we are both British British colonies so we both I guess um, um, in a global sense originated um, from the same part of the world and came and colonized New Zealand and came and colonized um, Australia though there were of course indigenous people there already um, because we get on so well and have quite similar cultures we have military connections as well military Military connections as well and so you might recall the Anzacs near the Australian New Zealand um, Army Corps and that means that in 
most world wars or in world, the world wars we've had, we have worked together. And certainly in wars since then, we work and we fight together. So we have strong military connections. Again, our culture is very similar. We watch the same television shows. We read the same books. Our governments are, are more or less the same. Uh, we wear the same fashion and we read the same books. And I've mentioned that already. Our cultures are very similar. A little bit different. <laughs> in, in I guess in Australia, we say fish and chips, whereas um, New Zealand, they say fashion chops. But in general, <laughs> we are very similar. In fact, New Zealand is in many ways Australia's little brother, and I say that with affection. Hey, let's look at another another country. Let's look at the United Kingdom. Let's look at the um, United Kingdom. And the United Kingdom is, of course, um, well, we are a British colony. So we came from the United Kingdom. And the United Kingdom, of course, includes England, and it includes um, Wales, and it includes Ireland, and it includes Scotland. And we are what is known as a British colony, and, and Britain is another word for the United Kingdom. Hey, so militarily, we have got strong links with them. We have fought with them in World War One and World War Two, and in the Middle East since. Many wars we have been fighting alongside them. We have really never fought against them. Um, because we are part originally part of the um, British Commonwealth, we compete with them, or rather against them, <laughs> Australia competes against them in the Commonwealth Games, and in the great and glorious game of cricket, and in the great and glorious game of rugby. We have strong sporting connections. We are very tightly linked to the UK, and we are very tightly linked to the US, and I think that's worth highlighting that. Um, again, we have a similar government to the United Kingdom. We watch the same sort of television, we read the same sort of books, we wear the same sort of clothes, we have the same sorts of religions. Um, if you were to live in the UK, it wouldn't be too different to living in Australia, except there's um, uh, considerably less beaches. Now, of course, the UK is different to Australia. There's no doubt we're culturally different. But compared to the rest of the planet, we're quite similar. Okay, let's look at another country. A, very, a country we're very different culturally to, but a country we have a special connection to, and that would be Papua New Guinea. And we have a connection to Papua New Guinea because we are very, um, oh, have I spelled foreign correctly? I'm not sure I have. I might have to fix that <laughs> because we are very um, concerned with giving them foreign aid, which means we're very active in their country in these three areas. Now, they are close by to us, but again, they're culturally very different. They're not the same. They're culturally very different. They're not like New Zealand. Um, we help in Papua New Guinea in the following ways. We give them government assistance. So we help them to grow their government. So we try to help them to grow their government in a democratic manner so that they can grow a government that is somewhat a bit like Australia's, which um, allows for, let's say, um, fairer assistance and fairer governance for all. So we try to help them to run their government. We also try to help them to um, grow their economy. And that means we try to help them get more money moving in their country and growing with money in their country. Now that usually means more jobs for more people. And more jobs for more people usually equals more wealth for more people. And that leads, leads to a, a raised living standard. So that's what raising the economy is usually all about. And last and certainly not least, we work in human development in Papua New Guinea. We try to help them to build more hospitals. We try to help them to build better schools. We try to help them to build better power stations and roads and other sorts of infrastructure. Okay, next, let's have a look at India. Now, India is a country that is quite a large country in a very different part of, um, of the world, and it is not culturally similar to Australia at all. Um, we do give them some foreign aid in particular communities, but India has got its own sorts of money, so we don't give them as much foreign aid as we give to, say, Papua New Guinea. India is a very interesting country. There are very rich people in India and some very, very poor people. We have a military alliance with India called... Um, Oz Index, and in fact, once a year, our, our various navies train together uh, in order to learn to work together to protect against foreign navies. So we have quite a strong military connection with India. I would say that's because uh, the fact we are actually old British colonies. We have both originally come from India. Um, 
sorry, we both originally were colonised by India, uh, and we were both part of the British Empire, so we do have that connection and that and that um, and that strong loyalty to, to Britain. Um, also, we um, play cricket with India. <laughs> we play cricket with India and England, of course, and of course South Africa is a country I haven't mentioned. Um, and so we have this sporting connection as well. We have a lot of trade with India. Um, our main trade is that we will actually export coal to India. Um, so that's $9 billion worth of trade. And we will bring in petroleum, which is $1.6 billion of trade. So once again, we sell more than we buy. So we make a bit of money off India, and that is important for us. Hey, let's look at the last two for today. Let's look at Argentina and Norway, two countries which culturally we are quite different to, but we have something very interesting. We both share claims to Antarctica, claims to Antarctica. And at the end of World War II, there were a bunch of countries that came together and claimed segments of Antarctica. And Australia was one, Argentina was another, Norway was another, and there was a bunch more as well. And just to note the Antarctic tree, I know we've claimed Antarctica and there's eight that we're sharing it with, but just to note the, the current tree in Antarctica. The Antarctic Treaty puts all claims of sovereignty or owning Antarctica on ice and the existence of these claims is acknowledged but no decision will be made about them as long as the current treaty runs. The Antarctic Treaty stipulates that the continent shall not be used for military activities, nuclear testing or storage of nuclear waste and that all parties have the right to inspect each other's activities. This prevents conflicts and has enabled Antarctica to develop into a place reserved for peace and research. So there are eight countries in total which share ownership sort of of Antarctica. Australia is one of them, so is Argentina, and so is Norway. Hey, we have looked at at least eight countries that have got special connections with Australia, and why, and I hope it's been somewhat helpful. See you later.